Welcome back to another episode of Lone Star College Football. Today we're going to be talking about the transfer portal. Uh, it officially opens up on December 5th, and I think there's a lot to look at as far as who on the Texas Longhorns roster might be entering the portal, as well as what positions we think Texas might be going after. Um, before we get into all that, please do us a favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel. We are, I think we're like 86-ish subscribers. Uh, we have a $25 giveaway that we are going to do at 100 And then as the subscriber count goes up, we're going to do more and more giveaways, uh, hopefully with uh, bigger prizes. So that being said, let's jump right into it. <clears throat> If you're a Longhorn fan and you're on Twitter or YouTube, obviously, uh, you have heard that Xavier Weather, his name is being tossed around as far as a Longhorn player who could potentially be going into the portal. It was reported last year that he put his name in the portal for like a day and withdrew it before it really came out, and then it kind of got leaked out after the fact. Uh his season this year is not going kind of as he hoped, as any of us really hoped. Uh, come to his true freshman season, we were all hoping that he would just just pick up right where he left off and, and even improve on that. And um, in some ways, he's actually been able to manage what he did last year and, and kind of keep a similar pace. And in some ways, it doesn't seem as much. Last season, he had 62 receptions for 900. 981 yards and 12 touchdowns. Uh, this year, he's got 46 receptions for 614 and nine touchdowns. Now, touchdown-wise, that's still really good. I believe he is tied for first, if not just first overall in the Big 12 for touchdowns at nine. I think the next person might have seven. So in that front, he's doing good. He's got, what is it, uh, 21 touchdowns in like 23 games in his career. That's really good numbers. Statistically, that's amazing. His receptions this year, 46. I feel like I wish I don't think it shows on here how many uh how many times he's been targeted. Because I know that there's been a lot of balls that I mean last year it happened too, but the quarterback just can't get him the ball in space. Um his longest reception of the year is 46 yards. But really, really I think what most fans who have been watching him his on the field body language seems different. Like last year he finished the season hobbling. Like the dude was hurt and he was still playing this year. It feels like if the ball is not perfect, he doesn't try for it. If it's a jump ball with him and defender, he lets the defender have it. And so it kind of puts in my mind, does he want to be here? If you put his name in the portal last year, that means he at least considered it. And then, so if you're already considering it and the season isn't quite going, the way you expected, um, you know, that might be a telltale sign that maybe he already has one foot in the door. Uh, Sark actually commented on that. He said if <clears throat> he said he's the kind of coach where if a player already has one foot in the door, uh, he's not really going to try to convince them to stay. Uh, his advice was maybe you just need to take that other step and go. And that's good. Like, there's good, there's pros and cons to it because there's cons because it's like Xavier Worthy's our best receiver. Like, don't get me wrong, Jordan Whittington's having, you know, a great year. He's got three less catches for, what, uh, 40, 54, 54 less yards. So that's that's pretty close. Problem is Xavier Worthy has nine touchdowns and Jordan Whittington has one. So it, it wouldn't be very good for us if he was to leave. Uh, especially with, you know, odds are uh, Roshan Johnson is going to leave. B. John Robinson is definitely leaving. And so you've got, you've got three of our biggest weapons on the offense, the side of the ball leaving. We have talented receivers coming in. We've got, you know, we've got Savion Red and Brennan Thompson, who are true freshmen this year. We've gotten to play a little bit. And then we've got Jonte Cook coming in for the next class. Uh, so we have talent. It would suck to to lose Xavier Worthy. Uh, it would really suck. Honestly, he's watching him last year. He's he's electric. He can be. Uh, other players that Texas might want to look at that, you know, I don't want to say, I don't think losing any player, unless they're like really bad, uh, like their mindset is, is negative, then it's like, okay, fine, we can lose them. 
like any other player, losing people is not good, right? Uh, Casey Kane, I think he's probably uh, at a pretty good spot where we I would expect to maybe see him be a guy who hits the portal. Ajay Hall uh, coming into the season wanting to play. He's had one reception for seven yards. So I would expect him to be the kind of guy who might uh, try and find the way out. Um, defensively, uh, Jed Bush, he – He's probably one of those guys that he got to play. He got to play some last year. Hasn't really gotten to play much this year. Uh, David Benda, uh, really, I mean linebackers in general, which kind of sucks because we need linebackers. Um, Brockermeyer, Luke Brockermeyer started all last season. Hasn't played much this year at all. I'd expect him to be in the portal, and. It's kind of hard because as fans, we look at hitting the portal and we're like, oh, you know, if you don't want to be a part of this program, then good riddance. We're glad you're leaving. But we have to also look at the flip side and look at a guy like Ryan Watts. He transferred from Ohio State to Texas and he's been a starter all year. We look at Ryan Watts, we're like, yeah, you're, you're really good. Glad we have you. But he had to leave a program to come here. So if players are leaving, don't message them on Twitter and talk about how much you can't stand them and they're not a team player. Uh, these are all business decisions. They've got to do what's best for them. Just like if you ever had to make that decision, you do the same thing. You got I mean, it's a team game. And when you play as a team, you have, you win as a team. You have a better chance of winning. But there's also situations where, like, for example, Xavier Worthy. I was saying it just a couple of weeks ago. I wouldn't blame him if he transferred. Don't get me wrong. He's, he's probably my favorite receiver I've ever watched uh, in Burn Orange. Last year was amazing to get to watch. But if I was a talented receiver like that who is like true, he is first-round draft uh, eligible. Like if he just puts another season like last year or next year, he'll be there. And you're open as often as you are and your quarterback just can't hit you in stride. That If it was me, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere with a quarterback that can – put the ball where it needs to be so I can make the plays that I can make and go be a first round draft pick. Uh, and so I can't blame him for going and doing the same thing. Like I would do that. You know, there's, there's, there's players who don't want to compete. I think there are situations where people leave because they don't want to compete for that job. And then I think there's players that it, it really is a business decision. It's not that they don't want to compete. It's that, you know, they need, they need better. They need better play at other positions to elevate what they can do, and they know they can. These guys aren't. They're not dumb. They're smart. They can figure out what they what they need to do for themselves. Uh, worthy, if you leave, appreciate what you did for the last two years. But <clears throat> with that being said, I think positions that we're probably going to be looking for pretty heavily in the transfer portal. Uh, what well, receivers probably one of them. If we lose. If we lose Xavier where they will probably go after a receiver. Now, mind you, don't forget, we do have Isaiah Nayor. Um, he's a highly talented receiver who transferred from Wyoming last year. He tore his ACL in the offseason. So we will have him next year, which is great. But it's also when you tear an ACL, there's always questions of how strong can you come back. Um, there's a lot of mental aspects to that of, you know, can you plant on that leg the way you used to? Physically, can you do it or does it hurt? Mentally, can you do it? Because there's a lot of people who say that after you, if you plant and tear your ACL on the plant, well, whenever it heals and you go to run that slant route and you've got a plant on that leg, in your mind, you're like, last time I did this, it hurt really bad and I was out for a year. And so it's really hard for players to come back from that. So we're hoping the best. But like Troy O'Meary, for example, did he? Yeah, I think he tore his ACL. And they were talking about him like he was like the next big thing in college football. And he tore his ACO, his true freshman year, and hasn't seen the field this year. He has one reception for nine yards. Um, he might be a transfer portal guy as well. I think So I think receiver will probably be one. Um, with the talent we have coming in, I doubt we go after like serious top guys, but we're Texas, so we probably we should. Um Tied in, I think we look pretty good there. I mean, if Jalil Billingsley transfers, 
then maybe we go after a tight end. But Jatavion Sanders is playing great. Uh, Gunnar Helm, he hasn't done much on the year, but I think he's a really talented guy. Uh, linebacker, 100% we're going after linebacker. DeMarvion Overstone is most likely gone. And Jalen Ford is most likely gone. I think, what's his name? Tucker Dorsey. What's his first name? Uh, Deontay, Devontae, Diamante, Diamante, Tucker Dorsey. He's a senior. I don't know if he has another year of eligibility. He's a transfer. He, so he transferred in last year. Um, linebackers probably are number one position of need, which could we could get some help in the recruiting class with Anthony Hill. It is expected that he will uh, join the Longhorn as part of the 23 class. So that would be great. Um, D-line, you're probably looking for a D-lineman. Our D-line guys have been playing great, but – you know, Ovia Gofu, who's kind of the – I think he's like an a, like a D-line linebacker type kind of guy. Um, he's playing real well. Brent, Baron Sorrell is playing really well, and I think he's only like a sophomore. Yeah, he's a sophomore. Ovia Gofu is a – he's a senior. Um, Keandre Coburn, I don't think he'll go to the draft, but he's a senior. He's got another year of eligibility. Byron Murphy, I think, has another year. So we have talent. Alfred Collins has another year. We have talent, but I think you if you if there's a talented enough guy that goes into the portal, Texas needs to put their their name in that hat. Defensive back, for sure. We Deshaun Jameson, I think he tweeted out, he tweeted, yeah, he tweeted today uh something about being, you know, last game at home. So uh, we're losing our number one corner. Ryan Watts has played super solid this year. I'm excited about him getting to be the number one guy next year. And we have talented defensive backs coming in, but it would be nice to get somebody who's got some experience at that position to come in as well. With all that being said, guys, just remember, uh, the transfer portal is new to everybody. These coaches haven't really – done as good of a job in the portal as I was hoping they would the first two years that they've been here. Um, as far as offensive linemen, they really haven't picked up anybody. But in recruiting and just overall improvement on players that we have on campus, uh, like development-wise, they've done really good. So there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of NIL aspects that change this game. Uh, the portal was already changing dramatically. And then before we could even figure out how the portal was changing to use it, NIL became a thing. And so now these coaches, the staff, they're having to figure out how to combine NIL with the portal and make it work the best. NIL is a good thing. I think it can help our program out a lot, uh, letting these guys know that we can, we can not only provide a culture on campus that can win, but as well as, you know, if you're a senior – and you're thinking, I need to go to the draft and get paid. Well, if you're going to go be a sixth or seventh round pick, we can provide you with NIL money that, that equals that. So stay for another year, develop more, get paid, and then maybe next year you're looking, you know, if you're a sixth or seventh round, maybe next year you're looking at a third or fourth round, you know, try to improve that a little bit, put yourself in a better situation, get your degree. Um, <clears throat> with all that being said, if y'all made it this far, I really do appreciate y'all. Do us a favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel as well as uh checking us out on tiktok we are a little over 300 on tiktok we're going to do another giveaway on there when we reach a thousand um it's a lot easier to grow on tiktok than it is on youtube but we're excited about that and uh we are going to come out with our texas versus baylor pregame show um might record that tonight so be on the lookout for that Appreciate y'all rocking with us. Welcome.